This question is the same as all the other support and weekend ones. It's just that they underlined the hypothesis or whatever you want to call it. So don't let that bother you. We're still dealing with supporting the claim. Let's just make, we'll focus on the claim, but yes, we need to read what comes before. Neural networks are computer models intended to reflect the organization of human brains and are often used in studies of brain function. According to analysis of 11,000 such networks, Rylan, Schaefer, and colleagues advise caution when drawing conclusions about brains from observations of neural networks. They found that when attempting to mimic grid cells, brain cells used in navigation, while 90% of the networks could accomplish navigation-related tasks, only about 10% of those exhibited any behaviors similar to those of grid cells. Oh my gosh. But even this approximation of grid cell activity has less to do with the similarity between the neural networks and biological brains than it does with the rules programmed into the networks. So there's a lot that's difficult to follow here. The sentences are long, they're kind of confusing, and, and they're twisted. But the, the piece that I highlighted earlier, I think, is really important, right? They're advising caution. That, that's a, a very uh, scientific, kind of fancy way of saying that these neural networks are not good, right? So if we're going to dumb summary here, dumb summary, uh, neural nets bad, right? Or at least not good, right? So I tend to just go with the more extreme version of this because I want to just notice connotations. But they are doing it in a little bit more of a wishy-washy way and saying that it, there's something wrong with using these things, okay? The underlying portion reinforces that, but I do admit that that sentence is kind of hard to follow, especially if English isn't your first language. I think that this is going to be difficult. So here's what it says. But even this approximation of grid cell activity, so the way that the network approximates the real brain, has less to do with the similarity between the neural networks and biological brains. So they're saying it's not really about a similarity between the brain and the neural network, the fake brain, right? Uh, it's more about the rules that are programmed in the network, right? So the, it's a successful network, but they're saying it's not successful because it's similar to the brain. It's successful because the rules that were used led it to be successful. Those might not be the same rules that the brain uses, right? That's kind of what they're saying is that basically the – another way to write this dumb summary is uh, the networks are not the same as the brain, right? It, they don't get super specific about why, but they're, they're basically saying be careful here, right? And even in the part that we underline, right, be, uh, they advise caution when drawing conclusions about brains from observations of networks. They're basically saying this is not a good analogy. This is not a good comparison. So just be careful with that. So to me, I'm, I'm saying it's just a bad – I'm saying bad or doesn't equal, right? So let's take a look at the choices, see if anything kind of matches with this. A, the rules that allow for networks to exhibit behaviors like those of grid cells have no equivalent in the function of biological brains. Now that scares me, no equivalent. But in a dumb way, it's kind of the same as what I just said here, right? That the networks are not – I mean, I literally wrote does not equal. I didn't realize that until just now. But does not equal the brain, right? So they're saying the networks, the neural networks do not equal the brain. They're not similar. So yeah, okay, no equivalent is still strong, right? I, I recognize that in my dumb summary, I made it stronger on purpose just to kind of simplify it. But I know that when I see it in an answer choice, it still should make me nervous if it's very, very like definitive like that. So makes me nervous, but it is saying the right thing. Let's, let's continue. Uh, B, the networks that do not exhibit behaviors like those of grid cells were nonetheless programmed with rules that had proven useful in earlier neural network studies. Now there's a lot that people are gonna latch onto there, but this is a good example of how traps can help. Earlier ne neural network studies, what are we talking about? Did we talk about time? Did we talk about any other experiments? No. So this is a very common reason that answers are wrong. They introduce this idea of time when time is not a factor in the passage, right? We talk about early experiments, later experiments. It, it, it doesn't seem like that's the, the thing. Um, other things that are wrong with this, is it also kind of sounds like they're saying that the networks are good, right? Um, the networks that do not exhibit behaviors like those of grid cells, so the networks that are not like brains, were nonetheless programmed with rules that had proven useful, right? Useful seems positive. So it sounds like they're saying that something about the networks is good. But remember, we, we kind of wanted to say that the networks are bad. So this just seems off, right? I mean, I don't know if I would have completely cross it out. 
but I certainly don't have that relationship to my dumb summary that I did with choice A. It's more tenuous. It seems like I'd be stretching it to make it fit. Um, let's look at C. Neural networks can often accomplish tasks that biological brains do. Well, already that doesn't sound good, but they are typically programmed with rules to model multiple types of brain cells simultaneously. I don't, I don't care about the rules, right? The, the, the second part of this choice doesn't really interest me at all. The first part is clearly positive. The networks can often accomplish tasks that brains do. The whole point is to say that the brains and the networks are not equivalent. So to say that they're both good and this, like that, that seems wrong. Um, they are typically programmed with rules to model multiple types of brain cells. Well, we also didn't talk about multiple types of brain cells, right? We talked about grid cells. So this is a, that kind of like small to big trap that we often see, is they took one little example that's mentioned in the passage, and they're trying to make us think about it like, oh, this, this is an example we should think about for every single possible com like thing that could exist, every type of cell, every type of network. No, that's not what we're doing here. Um, so I, I'll be pretty sure this is wrong. It's got the wrong connotation. D, once a neural network is programmed, is trained on certain tasks to see if it can independently arrive at processes that are similar to those performed by biological brains. Well, this is telling me how the, the network would work, but we're not, we're not training it. We're, we're not interested in how we got to this point. The point of the passage is saying, what, now that we have this network, does it, is it similar to the brain? So I don't, we're interested in the, the end result, not the first step. So this is just out of order. Um, and again, it's saying that they're similar. The whole point of our dumb summary was to say that they're not similar. They're cautioning against saying that they're similar. So in a very dumb way, I, I don't really want that. At this point, I would pick A and I would be right. I wouldn't feel 100% confident on this. But I think I'm at like 90% confidence. I'm pretty sure. Um, I was very uh, comfortable with my dumb summary. This seems to be hitting that in a way that none of the other choices are. Um, I'm a little nervous about the phrase no equivalent. That does seem very, very strong. But, you know, sometimes we got to go with it. And, and, and nothing else is even in the running, in my opinion. You know, I know I didn't cross out B, but like A was definitely better than B. So if I had to choose, and I'm, it's either a, a decision of like, pick choice A, which mostly works, but has this really strong word, or pick choice B that is like two strikes against it, but maybe I don't quite understand. I don't know. A seems like a better fit. So that's the same kind of decision making you have to make as well, is that you won't necessarily be able to prove everything with 100% confidence because the, the, there's only so much time you have for these modules. So you got to move on. But if you got to 90% confidence, yeah, move on. Like I might bookmark this. I doubt I would come back to it because I'd probably want to go to other things. But yeah, you know, I, I still feel like there's parts of the science I don't understand. It's really what it comes down to. But that's always going to be the case. That's com not completely avoidable. So we got to just be comfortable with the idea that we will not always understand enough of these science passages to definitively prove the answer, but we can get very, very, very close using simple things like dumb summaries and understanding how wrong answers and trap answers are built.